and welcome to another Tuesday evening here at the Plymouth Coliseum for Gladiators TV. My name is Gareth Bemister and I'll be commentating this evening for this clash between the Plymouth West Colour Gladiators and the Scunthorpe Scorpions. They will be racing for this championship match here at the Coliseum this evening. Plymouth Gladiators come to this evening's match after a sensational performance last week. 63rd was the score when they met the Leicester Lions last week. Three or four of their riders were in absolutely tremendous form. Of course, Ben Barker scoring 18 point maximum, six rides and six wins last week. He is going to hope that he can carry on that form this evening here against the Scunthorpe Scorpions. But there are several other gladiators that hit great form last week and they'll be hoping to carry on again this evening. So the visitors, the Scunthorpe Scorpions, they've had a mixed season so far. Two wins, two losses in the championship. Two wins at home, two losses away. So their home form is looking very good. They are spearheaded by several Australians who are going very well this year. One particularly going well is Ryan Douglas. He's already won two meetings this season that are individual events. And he's been going very well in both the championship and the premiership. And he's sure to spearhead this team this evening. Plymouth Gladiators, the Scunthorpe Scorpions, both of them are trying to get into those playoffs at the end of the year. They're both realistically going to challenge those playoffs as well. We're looking forward to this clash this evening. The track is in superb condition. The weather's been glorious all day, so we cannot wait to hear from these riders. So now let's go down to Dan in the pits. OK, so we're here trackside for Plymouth Gladiators versus the Scunthorpe Scorpions, joined by Henry Atkins tonight. And Henry, looking forward to tonight? Yeah, look at the weather, so um, no, hopefully a good night, um, hopefully we can get another win. Obviously last week went really well against Leicester, and um, yeah, hopefully we can do the same again today. A lot of people had Leicester down to win last week, but you proved the boys wrong. And uh, though, that team riding with Hans Anderson, how's it feel riding with Hans, rolling back the ears with him? Yeah, no, really good. Um, obviously Hans is a very experienced rider, so once I sort of knew me and him were in the front, I knew he would sort of keep me there. And um, no, we rode really well, I rode the outside, he rode the inside, so there's no, no way the uh, Leicester boys getting through. No Michael Palm Toft, not obviously rider placement still takes some play with his concussion protocol and Richard Lawson in guesting tonight as well. So uh, looking forward for the, the for the boys to, be, to do a good match tonight. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, obviously, big massive thank you to uh, Richard for stepping in. Um, hopefully Palm Toft will be back Friday over for the nine days. And um, yeah, no, hopefully Rich can do the same job that he did last week and hopefully all the boys take in the RR spots can score some points and um, yeah, get a win again. And up to Scunny on Friday, as you said, uh, up for there, of course, uh, two completely different tracks as well. Some of the, uh, with the boys there, looking forward to that one? Yeah, no, it should be good. Um, Scunthorpe's a really nice track, to be honest. Um, usually gets quite slick, but it's a nice, big, sort of open track, so you can sort of ride it hard and hopefully um, hopefully score some points up there, too. Happy days, mate. Well, wish you the best of the night and good luck. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> okay, we now have visiting rider with us here, Jordan Palin. And uh, Jordan, you were here last year as a reserve, but you're here tonight as a second heat leader number three. Any pressure for that tonight? Uh, there's always a bit of pressure coming down here. Everyone knows it's a gate in paradise trap. There's some good racing this uh, this season so far, so hopefully we can uh, get a few points on the board this evening. Double duties this year, of course, with Scunthorpe and with the uh, defending champions Peter Brewer in the in Premiership. Not a good start for the for the Panthers, but doing well for the Scorpions this year. Yeah, I think we struggled a bit with the uh, Panthers, but I think our time will come and towards the end of the season. I think that's when we'll be our strongest when we all click together and even myself chipping in a few more points help the team get a few more wins. Now, of course, I think you're the only the third member of the Scunthorpe team actually left from last year's team. A couple of riders have come in from other teams as well, led by uh, Ryan Douglas, a former Leicester rider. So how's it nice having, uh, having Ryan in the team? Yeah, definitely. He's a good rider, as you all know, and I've learned a lot from him this, um, this season already. So I think we're a bit stronger this year with the changes, but we're against Plymouth, which I think, again, are stronger this year than last year when we came. So hopefully it'll be a good match. And a lot of miles for you this year, because I believe you've uh, signed for Torren in the Under-24 League over in Poland. So uh, how's it going to feel riding over in Poland in the big stadiums like that? Yeah, it's a bit unreal, really. Torren was the first track I rode when I was a youth across the waters. So it's amazing to sign for him. And I just want to get a few more extra laps abroad and uh, get the experience up and hopefully be a fully fledged rider across there. We well, wish you all the best, Jordan, tonight and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you. So here are the team lineups for this evening. For the West Colour Plymouth Gladiators this evening, at number one, guesting once again, will be Richard Lawson. At number two will be Alfie Botel. Number three will be Ben Barker. The Gladiators will be operating the rider replacement at number four. Number five, the captain Hans Anderson. Henry Atkins will be at six. And Dan Jilks at seven. And the team manager for the Gladiators, of course, Gary May. And for the visitors to Scunthorpe Scorpions this evening, at number one is Ryan Douglas. Number two, the captain Simon Lambert. Number three for the Scorpions will be Jordan Palin. 
The Flying Finn at number four, Tero Arneo. Jake Allen at five. Number six will be Ryan Kinsley. And Zane Kennedy at number seven. And the team manager for the Scorpions, Rob Godfrey. Rider replacement for Michael Palmtoft. And it worked very well last week. So the Gladiators will be hoping for the same sort of thing this week. They'll be hoping that they can really make use of that rider replacement. And uh, a move on to another excellent win against the Scorpions. So far, the Gladiators, they have, as we see Ryan Kinsey been introduced, the, uh, the Gladiators here, uh, the Scunthorpe Scorpions here, of course, being introduced to the crowd. Jake Allen, another quick Australian rider. Going very well this season. There's so many of these riders that are such specialists at their home track, but it'll be interesting to see how they go here. Tero Arneo, the very experienced Finnish rider. Really experienced Finnish rider, of course, and he's been banging in lots of points already this season. Jordan Palin, of course, the rider who Dan spoke to earlier on in the meeting. Definitely a hotly tipped rider for the future. And down there at number three, doing a fine job for the Scorpions so far this year. Simon Lambert, the captain of the Scorpions. Plenty of experience from Simon Lambert. He will bring lots of experience to this circuit. And, of course, the rider that we are tipping to be the one to catch this evening, the flying Ryan Douglas, who has been in sensational form throughout the winter at home in Australia. He's come back to the UK and he's still in great form. The triumphant gladiators, they must be on cloud nine at the moment. They must be really, really looking forward to this event. They must be really savouring this opportunity, having had such a good night last week. Dan Jilks, that reserve, the youngster, had a great start to the season for both the gladiators and the centurions. And his reserve partner, of course, Henry Atkins, another young rider from Devon, of course. Henry, plenty of laps around this circuit. And uh, Henry had a good night the other night last week, of course. Hans Anderson, another rider who had a great night against Leicester at number five. Provided plenty of support to Henry Atkins. And Henry was very great, grateful for that. Of course, rider replacement still in place for Michael Palmtoft, but... Uh, We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. But number three there, of course, the man of the moment last week. 18-point maximum last week from this man. So he's gone six races now unbeaten. Ben Barker, absolutely flying last week. Can he continue that form? Another rider in good form, Alfie Botel. Riding at number two. Actually got an outing in heat 15 last week. Uh, and he earned it as well, having ridden very well. And coming in as guest once again, of course, for the Gladiators. Richard Lawson, who did a sterling job last time. He's a very good guest to have booked down here at the Coliseum. He rides the circuit well. He rides most circuits well. As Stan said, he rode at King's Lynn and rode very well as well. So a good rider um, that they've got there at guest, number one, Richard Lawson. So the lineup for Heat 1. In, on the inside in gate one will be Simon Lambert in yellow. Gate two in blue will be Alfie Botel. Ryan Douglas in gate three in white. And Richard Lawson off the outside in red. Plymouth Gladiators number one. So tapes up on heat one and into the first turn it is Ryan Douglas that makes a flying start and he goes out of her turn two leading by a considerable margin. Botel's in there in second. He's up the inside coming out of this turn of Ryan Douglas but Ryan Douglas doing exactly what we thought he would do. Flew out the traps but the gladiators are packing that second and third. It's a three all as it stands at the moment unless of course Simon Lambert can do anything at the back. So Ryan Douglas, we know he's on form, he's looking tremendous in this one, did exactly what he needed to do, got himself out the gate. The last lap flag, one more lap to go. Alfie Botel, he's having a look around at different lines as he comes off that turn, but at the moment he's got no answer to the flying Australian at the front. Into the third and fourth bend for the final time, Alfie Botel has another look up the inside, but it's going to be a win for Ryan Douglas. Alfie Botel finishes second, third place goes to Richard Lawson. So a great first ride for Ryan Douglas, but it is a three-all. 
on a shared in this first heat Ryan Douglas doing exactly what he needed to do and that was the pack the maximum points straight away here so the heat one result then the winner in white was Ryan Douglas three points to him Alfie Botel second in blue third place Richard Lawson one point in red and yellow no score for Simon Lambert 51 dead was the winner's time for Ryan Douglas 51 dead and it's a three all Gladiators three Scunthorpe Scorpions three as well so on instead ready to go and we've got in gate one Henry Atkins in red coming off a of gate one here gate two in white will be Ryan Kinsley for the Scorpions Dan Jilks out of blue out of gate three in blue and in yellow gate four will be Zane Kennedy for the Scunthorpe Scorpions so a good clash here for very even riders so away we go with heat number two and it's a good start in white there but and the yellow riders come round as well so Zane Kennedy leads but the second and third is straight for Dan Jilks goes into that corner very very quickly up the back of Zane Kennedy and Jilks looks quick in that second place he's putting Zane Kennedy under tremendous pressure in this pit corner as they go back up that straight then so Zane Kennedy's gonna have to do something about Dan Jilks here he's clearly quicker in that second place in the blue helmet back into this turn and Zane Kennedy's got a little room Jilks has gone up into the dirt to get some speed down that back straight he goes back into Ben 3 much more quickly than Zane Kennedy but Kennedy's riding a very sensible line on the inside he's not letting Dan Jilks have a, a nibble at him at all anywhere now Dan, Dan Jilks goes wide going up this back straight to come in much more quickly Zane Kennedy's still on that inside line he's not leaving any gaps it's another win for the Scorpions but it's a three all on team points and Zane Kennedy rode a very sensible ride there Dan Jilks looked very quick in blue but Zane Kennedy doing everything he needed to do to stay in the lead and it's another honours shared race between the Gladiators and Scorpions and this is looking very tight already even in these early stages so a great ride there for Zane Kennedy but Jilks looked very quick in that second place definitely wanting to have a go at Zane Kennedy perhaps when the dirt starts to move out later in the day we'll see a few more overtakes but heat two result then Zane Kennedy in yellow he takes the three points Dan Jilks in blue finishes second with two points one point to Henry Atkins in red and Ryan Kinsley no score for him and it's three all once again this time we have got out of gate one Jordan Palin in white for the Scorpions Gate two in blue for the rider replacement will be Hans Anderson. Terro Arneo is in gate three for the Scorpions in yellow and on the outside in red. Six out of six last week. What is he going to come up with this week? Ben Barker for the Plymouth Gladiators off the outside this time. So being called to the line for this heat number three. The Gladiators with Ben Barker and Hans Anderson. Palin and Arneo for the Scorpions. So away we go on this heat three and it's very close into the turn. Arneo's gone across the front of Hans Anderson and blocked his way through that turn and it's Arneo who leads. Hans Anderson in that second, third is Ben Barker at the moment and he's going to be needing to find a way. That's a great ride by Hans Anderson. Forced his way past Terro Arneo down his back straight and now Ben Barker is having a go at the finish rider in that second place Ben Barker is outside he's inside he's trying to find a way past Terro Arneo for that second place to try and make it a 5-1 but at the moment Terro Arneo he's right in the center of the track he's not letting Ben Barker through Hans Anderson's got loads of speed in this one he's away and dry here but that battle for second still rages because Ben Barker is going up into the dirt he's going to cut back here down the back straight he's got loads of drive but he's just run out of space as he gets to the end of the straight and it looks like Yellow's going to hold on to that second place as they come to the line. So a great ride there from Hans Anderson. A good ride from Terro Arneo in that second place as well. Ben Barker, try as he might, he couldn't get past the experienced finish rider there in that second place. But it was still a 4-2 for the Gladiators. It's still a good result with a third for Hans Anderson, a 
Three points for Hans Anderson and one point, of course, for Ben Barker. So a good overtake there from Hans Anderson early on in the race. Made sure that he did what he needed to do earlier in the race. And we await for the official result of Heat 3. It was a win, of course, in blue, Hans Anderson. Three points for him. Two points in yellow, Taro Arneo. One point, Ben Barker in red. Jordan Palin at the back. What? No score for him. 4-2 in the favour of the Gladiators, which does make it 10-8 at the moment overall. So a slender lead after three heats for the Gladiators. Yeah, an interesting lineup this one, and it's uh, again some. It just looks like there's so much strength in both of these teams. But heat four here, gate one will be Zane Kennedy off that uh, off the gate one that hasn't ha seen much much luck so far in yellow. Gate two in blue will be Dan Jilks. Gate three for the Scorpions is Jake Allen in white, and in red off the outside is Hans Anderson. So. West Colour Gladiators versus the Scunthorpe Scorpions, beautifully poised at 9 all after three heats here. And the start marshal calls them in for this heat number four. And we will wait to see what happens here on this freshly watered circuit. So tapes up on heat four, away they go, and Jilks has made a great start off of the blue gate. He's out in front, he stopped the white rider coming through, so Jake Allen wasn't able to come through on Ben 2. That's because Jilks was there where he wanted to be, and Hans Anderson's gone up the inside. It's very close, he comes past, and now the Gladiators are on for a 5-1. Jake Allen, he tried to make himself wider coming off that turn, but Hans Anderson still found a way through, and Anderson now is in that second place, and you've got to think he's going to shepherd Dan Jilks home here. Dan Jilks looking quick out front though, and Zane Kennedy out the back also with no answer to the speed of these first, these front two, these gladiators. One more lap to go here then, and it's on for a 5-1. Looking very comfortable here for the gladiators. Jay Callan in that third, he's dropping away a little bit from Hans Anderson. He perhaps surprised him a little bit coming past him, like he did. But it's going to be a 5-1 for the Gladiators, a great 5-1 for them. Well earned as well. So a very well earned ride by both the Gladiators there. A great start from Dan Jilks. He flew out the traps and Hans Anderson did everything he needed to do as the experienced rider there forced the issue past Jake Allen. And a Heat 4 result. It was a win in blue, Dan Jilks. In red, second place, Hans Anderson. Two points to him. One point to Jay Cullen in white. Zane Kennedy, no score in yellow. And it's a 5-1 to the Gladiators. 52.19 was the winning time. And it's 14-10. And we've got a four-point lead all of a sudden for the Gladiators. A four-point lead. Gate one will be Ben Barker off the inside in red for all the Gladiators this time. Simon Lambert will be in gate two in yellow for the Scorpions. Gate three will be the rider replacement Dan Jilks in this one for the Gladiators in blue. And on the outside, Ryan Douglas in white for the Scunthorpe Scorpions. And we get our first glimpse here of Barker versus Douglas. So yeah, Dan is on that, uh, Dan is on that favored gate three. It is a good gate, that gate three. It has been serving the ride as well. So Dan, he made a good start in the last one, of course, out of, uh, out of gate two. So. Perhaps he's just got his gating gloves on, it doesn't matter where he is, but here we go with the heat number five. So away we go with heat five and Barker's made a great start off the inside and Douglas has gone down as they go into this turn. Douglas foul, there was just not quite enough room. Lambert has seen it late over there. We're just a little bit worried about Simon Lambert seeing very late the red lights, but we have got a stop. Relatively gentle, uh, gentle fall for Ryan Douglas, so we weren't expecting uh, him to be feeling too much, uh, too sore after that. Yeah, just a classic first turn. Uh, it's good to see Douglas back on his feet. Um, classic uh, Plymouth corner, first bend bunch in, you know, because they're all going for the same bit of track. But uh, hopefully he'll dust himself down and then we'll go again in, in heat five. So the rerun then of heat number five with Ben Barker off of gate one in red. Gate two for the Scorpions, Simon Lambert in yellow. Dan Jilks, the rider replacement, of course, in uh, blue, gate three. And gate four on the outside, Ryan Douglas for the Scunthorpe Scorpions in the white helmet colour. But he's going to have to gate even better from all there, all the way out there on the outside by the fence. So 
the start marshal calling them into position for the start of heat number five. So away we go with heat number five and Jilks has made a good one again and Barker has made a good one on the inside. Ryan Douglas tries to come up the inside. Douglas has gone right up the inside of Ben Barker. He's had to stop as he goes into that turn and Ben Barker's got away but Douglas isn't done yet. He's going to have a go at Ben Barker later on in this race but Ben Barker has got so much speed out front at the moment. Ryan Douglas hasn't got an answer to him. Dan Jilks in that third place. Is he going to be able to do anything about this Australian that is in front of him at the moment? But Benjamin Barker looking fantastic once again. He's found the form once again. And Ryan Douglas in that second place at the moment doesn't have an answer to him. They've got one more lap to go to secure this 4-2 for the Gladiators. It doesn't look like Dan Jilks is going to be able to do anything about that second place. And Douglas actually has got a little bit closer to Ben Barker as this race has gone on. But I think Ben Barker's got plenty in the tank. He certainly has. He takes the win in red. Ryan Douglas, a good ch good try on that first corner to get up the inside of Ben Barker, but it's just second place this time, and it's another heat advantage for the Plymouth Gladiators, another 4-2. And hopefully this 4-2 won't be taken away from them, because uh, that's what happened, of course, when they got that 4-2 earlier, but Ben Barker back on form. Perhaps that uh, heat three was just a blip for Ben. Certainly went well there with a great start off the inside. So heat six out of gate one will be Jake Allen for the Scorpions. In white, in red, gate two is Richard Lawson for the Gladiators. Gate three in yellow, Ryan Kinsley for the Scorpions. And off the outside in blue will be Alfie Botel for the West Colour Gladiators this time. Now we've got Richard Lawson having a look at that gate two, which has been unfavourable so far. So lots of thought on this start. It really is so important here at the Coliseum to get a good start. Despite the start marshal's best efforts, the riders hanging back, checking clutches. But we anticipate this heat number six clash here. Where the Scorpions need to claw something back. So away we go with Heat 6, that's a good start by Richard Lawson, but he's been beaten into the turn by Jake Allen, who gets into the turn first. Lawson goes wide, and Alfie Botel is packed into that third place then. So, out in front, Jake Allen, this is much more like it for him, but Lawson's all over the back of him going into this turn. Lawson, he's gone a little bit wider, and Jake Allen, he's chasing the dirt on the back straight. He looks quick in that second place. He's going to go try and go round the outside again as they come round this turn. He swoops round the outside. He just about runs out of space. And Jake Allen maintains that lead, but Lawson is chasing him hard here. He really wants that win, Richard Lawson. There's one more lap that Jake Allen needs to hang on for here. As they go back into this turn, Lawson, then he's regrouped. He comes very tight this time into the turn. Sweeps wide on the back straight. Back into this turn then, Richard Lawson, he's gone into the bend wide, he's going to try and come round him once again. It's close to the line, but it is a win in white for Jake Allen, a good ride for him, keeping hold of things there in that first place, forcing the three all for the Scorpions and the Gladiators here. Third win for a Scunthorpe ride of this evening. So Jake Allen, a good ride from him there, three points to Jake Allen in white there, two points to Richard Lawson in red. One point to Alfie Botel in blue and Ryan Kinsley, no score for him in yellow. A winning time of 51.88 for Jake Allen. Three all once again here between the Gladiators and Scorpions, which means that we are 21-15 between the Gladiators and the Scorpions. And that six point lead is maintained as we're getting on with things here as the riders for Heat 7 are already coming onto the circuit. So the lineup here then for Heat number seven in gate one on the inside there in red is Hans Anderson. Gate two for the Scorpions will be Jordan Palin in white. Henry Atkins in gate three in blue. And off the outside in gate four will be Tiro Arneo in that yellow helmet right on the outside. So Anderson off the inside here. Needs to do a captain's job in this one for the West Colour Gladiators. So we are ready here for heat number seven. So away we go on heat seven. It's a brilliant start off the inside for Hans Anderson. Tero Arneo's followed him in there. Arneo goes up the inside, but Anderson's got the speed. He goes into bend three, leading the way with Tero Arneo in that second place. 
Henry Atkins has packed the places in that third. He's got to keep Jordan Palin at bay in that third place. But Arneo, he's on that inside line. He's having a look at Hans Anderson. And he's on the inside. And Han Henry Atkins in that third is going to be keeping an eye on Terrell Arneo in that second place. Because Atkins, he's also going up the inside. He's not looking for a different line. They're using the same line through this bend. But Hans Anderson looking brilliant at the front here. He is looking very, very quick this evening. Jordan Palin out the back here with no answer to the other riders. But Hans Anderson, the Flying Dane, looking great once again. He's going to pick up the three points here for the Gladiators. Second place to Tiruanio. Third place there was Henry Atkins, which does secure the heat advantage for the Gladiators. And Hans Anderson is delighted with that, as you can see. The rider in red is Hans Anderson. Hans Anderson, so another great ride from Hans Anderson there, really good ride, he's riding so well this evening, he looked so quick off of gate one, but the heat seven results here, the win in red, three points to Hans Anderson, two points to Tero Arneo in yellow, one point to Henry Atkins in blue, and no score for Jordan Palin in white, that's a 4-2 win to the West Colour Gladiators, 25-17 is now the score of the meeting. Dan Jilks coming out in blue in heat eight. Yep, that's right. That's what he should be. Yep. So <laughs> gate one. <laughs> he's trying to confuse me, I think. Gate one is Dan Jilks in blue off the inside. Gate two in yellow will be Zane Kennedy. Gate three for the Gladiators will be Alfie Botel. And off the outside in gate four in white is the rider currently making his way round to the start. The captain of the Scorpions not going so well so far for him this evening. Can this be the time that Simon Lambert in gate four, starts to make some progress. Couple of races ago, it was very even, but all of a sudden, the Gladiators here at the Coliseum starting to stretch their legs, take the sting out the tail of the Scorpions. And here we go with heat number eight then. So, what can Lambert do off the outside gate? Can he come across Alfie Botel and cause some problems here for the Gladiators? So tapes up on heat eight, it's another good start off the inside. But across the front comes Zane Kennedy. Jilks has a bit of a wobble in the middle of the turn. But it's at the moment, look at that ride there from Alfie Botel. He went right round the outside of Zane Kennedy. A great ride from Botel to lead this race. Kennedy now has seen him and he's got to try and stop Dan Jilks coming through as well. But Alfie Botel, he was right out wide there coming around this turn. And he's clearly enjoying himself here at the Coliseum. And now Dan Jilks is all over the back of Zane Kennedy for that second place. Into this pit cut, turn they go, and Alfie Botel looking great out front. So Dan Jilks now, what can he do in that second place? Can he force a 5-1? Because he is all over the back of Zane Kennedy at the moment. Back into this turn then, Jilks, he goes up into the dirt. He's going to go wide, he's going to try and come round Zane Kennedy. But there is not quite enough space, and I think Kennedy's going to hold on to this. Great ride, though, from Alfie Botel. Zane Kennedy rides well to cling on to that second place, but another 4-2 for the Plymouth Gladiators. So Alfie Botel, a brilliant first corner there. He went right out into the dirt, came steaming past the riders in yellow and blue. And he takes the win. Three points to Alfie Botel in red. Two points to Zane Kennedy in yellow. One point to Dan Jilks in blue. And Simon Lambert, no score once again for the captain. 4-2 to the West Colour Gladiators. 51.62 was the, score, the, the time for Alfie Botel. And a great ride there once again for the Gladiators. So we're going to go and hear from Dan down in the pits now and see what the thoughts of these riders are. So over to Dan, who is down in the pits. Gary, quick one, mate. 10 points that the boys doing well so far. Yeah, we're doing well. We're just plugging away, getting the four twos and the five ones and that and starting to pull away from them. But they haven't used their tax up yet, so we've got to be still on it, you know what I mean? Still watch what's happening and everything, so yeah, that's what we're doing. A lot of gating tonight from the Scorpions, uh, better than the, uh, la the lines were last week, but uh, the boys there getting lines that they, they're obviously not, they're not riding. Yeah, and that's it, that's what's hopefully going to win us through the meeting, you know. As long as we get 49 points tonight, that's good enough. We get three, they get nothing, which is what our aim is. Up to Scorpions on, on uh, Friday for the return leg. Uh, can the boys do it again here like they're doing, like they're doing tonight? 
Yeah, you know, anything's possible in Speedway. And, you know, Scorpions are good on their home track. You know, they thump Leicester. Uh, they beat someone the other day, you know. And we've got to be on it when we're up there, you know what I mean? Because them boys are fast around there. So we just got to hope. And maybe if we don't win, we go for a point. And they'll just make us good for the, up the table. Long way to go, mate. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Ten points down so far, but still a long way to go. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking at at least a point from this meeting. We're just uh, going to make some changes now, um, tactical changes, um, to get try and get that point. Our aim is to get something out of this meeting. And uh, so far, we're doing exceptionally well if we take Leicester's performance last week. Uh, <laughs> we're not doing too bad. So it's slightly slipping away, but I've got a bit of a plan and see if it works. Of course, uh, the Scorpions seem to be gating a lot more than what Leicester were doing last week, but then the Gladiators seem to be picking lines where they're not go when they're not going yeah obviously you know we don't ride here every week and they never ride here every week and they, they know got a bit of track advantage it's very encouraging to see us gating because we have been struggling gating um which you know is getting has kept us in this meeting obviously so you know we've got a few more races to go and hopefully we can get at least something out of it long way to go mate keep it up thank you but here we are back tonight for heat number nine. We've got Dan, Gate, uh, Dan Jilks, the rider replacement off the inside in gate one in blue. Jake Allen in gate two in white. Ben Barker in red off gate three. And Zane Kennedy comes in to replace the uh, Ryan Kinsley in this one off the outside in gate four. So a replacement for the Scorpions. They're throwing the dice here. 29-19 it is. They need to do something here. And Zane Kennedy coming onto the circuit to replace Ryan Kinsley. So tapes up, away we go, it's a brilliant start for number five, Jake Allen, the white rider there going round the outside of Zane Kennedy's, not quite got enough speed to get past the Gladiators bearing, but out front, Jake Allen once again, he's dominating the race at the moment, he's managed to slow up Ben Barker coming out the turn, Barker's now gone into the dirt, it's very slimy out there and he's lost a little bit of momentum, Ben Barker, but out front, Jake Allen. He has got Ben Barker all over him. You can see he's turning hard coming out of that turn. And that's forcing Ben Barker to slow up coming out of that turn. And at the moment, that's doing the trick for Jake Allen. Is he going to do the same here? Has Ben Barker seen it? Because Jake Allen, he's turning very tight once again. Ben Barker, he's all over the back of him coming around here. Jake Allen then, if anything's going to happen, I think it's going to be on this last bend because he's turning the bike very hard as he exits the turn. But I don't think Ben Barker's close enough. I think it's going to be a win for Jake Allen. Ben Barker in that second place. Dan Jilks finishes in the third place. Three all then to the Gladiators. Another heat vic victory for the Scorpions though. Great ride by Jake Allen, the rider in white there. He made a great start, did what he needed to do in the first corner and he wins heat nine. So Jake Allen, three points to him in white. Ben Barker, two points in red. One point for Dan Jilks in blue and Zane Kennedy. No score there in yellow. 53.16 was the time, so considerably slower than earlier on in the evening. Three all then, the honours are evened. 32-22, there's still that 10-point lead for the West Colour Gladiators. So here we go with heat number 10 then. Gate one, Alfie Botel did win his last ride. Gate two is Terroanio in yellow. Richard Lawson out of gate three in red and Jordan Paley in gate four in white off the outside. So a ten point lead here with six rides to go. Still all to play for really. But it's slipping away here for the Scorpions. Definitely slipping away. So it looks like the rider in white there, Jordan Palin, moving away from the set, from the uh, start, going back, lining himself up once more. Start Marshall is ready to get going here with this heat number 10. So Alfie Botel off that inside. Away we go then with Heat 10 and it is Botel off the inside who gets into the turn first. Terroanio has followed him in there and round the outside comes Jordan Palin to try and put the challenge. He's fallen going into that turn though Palin, no doubt he's suffered there going into that turn where it's a little bit wet. He's trying to get himself off of the fence 
Hasn't got time. The red flags, the red lights come on, and despite trying to get himself out of the fence there, Jordan Palin couldn't get himself up, and he will no doubt be excluded there as the cause of the stoppage, having fallen going into Ben three. So Alfie Botel will be very disappointed with that. He'd made a great start off of the inside. He'd done exactly what he needed to do. So heat number 10, Alfie Botel in gate one with the blue helmet colour. In gate two, Tero Arneo in yellow for the Scorpions. Richard Lawson out of gate three for the Gladiators in red. And of course there will be nobody out of gate four for the Scunthorpe Scorpions here because Jordan Palin excluded as the cause of the stoppage in the first run of heat 10. So this is a chance for the Gladiators to really grab this fixture by the scruff of the neck here. Heat number 10. So away we go, and it is a good start from Teruanio, but he's bullied out of it by Alfie Botel, and Lawson goes up the inside. Lawson goes past Teruanio as well, and we are on for a 5-1. It was a great first turn from Richard Lawson, who's now going underneath Alfie Botel as well. He's just going to shepherd him round this turn. So what do you do if you're Teruanio at this point? He's got two gladiators in front of him, Richard Lawson and Alfie Botel covering the circuit covering every single inch of this circuit here at the Coliseum. Some great team riding between them. It was good to see Richard Lawson. He went down low coming out of that first and second turn. He found some grip, found some drive right down low. That propelled him past Terro Arneo. And now they are on for a 5-1. And Richard Lawson seems to be enjoying that inside line coming around this turn. So the checker flag being made ready. And this is a fine win here for Alfie Botau and a fine win for the Plymouth Gladiators. 5-1 to the West Colour Gladiators. Another great ride here at the Coliseum. And Alfie Boto and Richard Lawson delighted with themselves there, as they should be. Great racing, great team riding. That is why everybody was so excited about getting Richard Lawson down here as this guest. Alfie Boto then in blue gets the three points. Two points to Richard Lawson in red. One point to Terro Arneo in yellow. And, of course, no fourth place finisher with the exclusion of Jordan Palin. 52.31 was the time, 5-1 to the Plymouth Gladiators, which brings us to 37.23 now in favor of the Gladiators. Once again, we are lined up for Heat 11. Ryan Douglas off the inside. Hans Anderson in gate two. Ryan Kinsley in gate three, and Henry Atkins off the outside in gate four. And away we go, and it is the two off the inside that make it first. It's Douglas that leads into the turn. Hans Andersen's going right round the outside. He's going to try and go past. He switched up the inside, but Douglas has got him covered. Henry Atkins is now putting a challenge around the outside. He lifts violently. That allows Ryan Kinsley through for that third place. But at the front, Ryan Douglas here. He has got the measure of Hans Andersen at the moment. Hans Andersen tried his best to get past him in the early part of this race, but Douglas had him covered. Kinsley and Atkins still fighting over that third and fourth, but at the front, Ryan Douglas, the rider that we tipped at the beginning to be the one to watch this evening, leading Hans Andersen, leading the man who is in form for the Gladiators. And certainly it's a little bit of damage limitation here for the Scunthorpe Scorpions as they look like they're gonna win another heat here. But more importantly, it is a 4-2 with Ryan Kinsley finishing third. So a rare heat advantage to the Scunthorpe Scorpions as they get a 4-2 with Ryan Douglas winning and I'm sure he's pleased with that Heat 11 result then a win in white for Ryan Douglas three points to him two points to Hans Anderson in red one point for Ryan Kinsley in yellow no points to Henry Atkins in blue and it's a 4-2 to the Scorpions 51.37 was the time for Ryan Douglas Ryan, one point drop so far, but uh, the boys still fighting, yeah? Yeah, exactly. I think we definitely still want to try to get a point out of it. And um, I think it's possible, but we need to finish strong. And uh, I think I'm going to come in for the next one and, and 13 as well. So hopefully I can keep popping out and 
and keep it close. So the attack sub for you in, in next race, yeah? I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> Well, I could, you, you were flying, I know, the name Flying Ryan was certainly going in Australia in, in a pre-meet or pre-season. You, you won a couple of meetings over there. And then, of course, you come over here and Ryan for the Scorpions this year. Happy with how you're going? Yeah, the season's going real well and I uh, still feel like I'm slowly getting better and, yeah, and things are slowly coming. So, yeah, I just keep my head down and, uh, and try to do as well as I can every meeting. Premiership with the Wolves as well and, uh, of course, two different tracks you go in there, like, like the tight, t- tight tracks of, uh, of Wolves and the fast flow and track of Scunny. Uh, again, premiership for you. Looking forward to it for the uh, league campaign starting against, I believe it's Kings Lynn on Monday. Yeah, that's it. Um, we've got a decent side there as well, and Kings Lynn have uh, been turning over a few teams, so we've got to be on our game. But uh, yeah, we're definitely good enough to do it, and we'll be up for it. I do, mate. All, all the best. We'll see you in a bit. Cheers, boys. Two race wins, mate. Go get in it. Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying tonight, so happy days. Of course, riding for Kent, um, I think it was at Milton Hall you were at, and then in the, in the, uh, the league finals, although the... So, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I rode at Kent, um, for Kent at Milton Hall on Sunday. Um, had a few little uh, just silly mistakes there with, on my behalf, but other than that, had a good uh, and quite a good little, um, little run at the minute. And tonight going well, we so see the boys so far, 39-27 up. Gating is most importantly here, because we saw that the... Uh, the Scorpions have been gating, not as much as the Lions were last week, but um, I say the boys, still a long way to go, anything can happen. Yeah, exactly, anything can happen, and um, no, we just uh, had a little team talk then, so uh, everyone's pretty fired up, see how the uh, boys finish off. Um, my night's, uh, well, I assume my night, my programme rides are done now, so see how we go. Don't fancy eat 15 then, do you? Oh, if they ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, but we'll see. Well, you had one last week, and uh, you, you had like nine paid, 11 from your, from your program rides with the rider placement as well coming in. And uh, you seem to just enjoying your riding now? Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. Just trying to take, like, take the pressure off myself just to enjoy, enjoy my racing. And um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going well at the moment. So. All the best, mate. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Cheers, mate. So the official lineup then for Heat 12, a few changes here. Out of gate one will now be Ryan Douglas, who's a tactical substitute. He will be in yellow. In red in gate two will be Ben Barker. Zane Kennedy comes in in gate three uh, for the Scorpions. And Dan Jilks off the outside in gate four. So some masterful tactics here for the Scorpions. So all of a sudden this Heat 12 looking absolutely stacked full of talent because the two Australians in this one have been going well. And they will want to do something about this big deficit here, this 12-point deficit in this one. So here we go with Heat 12, and it's the two off the inside that make it there first. It's Ryan Douglas that hits the start first, but Zane Kennedy's coming up the inside. Ben Barker has to come across St. Kennedy going into Ben 3 and that has allowed on the outside Dan Jilks to make up some ground but Ryan Douglas absolutely peerless out in front at the moment Ben Barker in that second place has got no answer to him and Kennedy has got himself into the third so it's a four points to two situation at the moment in the favour of the Scorpions so now Dan Jilks is starting to wind that machine up he's tried to go round the outside as he comes around the pit bend, he's chasing hard at the back of the field. Dan Jilks trying to make up that place, trying to stop this going the way of the Scorpions. But Ryan Douglas looking very impressive out in front. No answer to him here at all from Ben Barker. It's going to be another win for Ryan Douglas. Ben Barker finishes second. And Zane Kennedy crucially finishing third to give a 4-2 to the Scorpions as they begin to chip away at this Gladiators lead. The man they call flying Ryan, Ryan Douglas. So Ryan Douglas, Douglas. Heat 12 winner there. Three points for the Scorpions from the rider in yellow. Ben Barker, second place. Two points to him in red. Zane Kennedy, one point to him in white. And Dan Jilks, no score there in blue. 51.50 is Ryan's winning time. 4-2 to the Scorpions. And that does start to chip away at this Gladiators lead 41 31 now, 10 point deficit in favour of the West Colour Gladiators. Heat 13 tonight against the Scorpions, and out of gate one, we have got Richard Lawson. Gate two will be Ryan Douglas in white, gate three in blue, Hans Anderson. And off the outside, 
In yellow is, G is Jake Allen for the Scorpions. So a stacked heat 13 here. 41-31 is the score in favour of the West Colour Gladiators. And we are hotly anticipating this heat number 13. Richard Lawson coming into line. Up on that inside line. So tapes up, away they go, and off the inside it is Richard Lawson that gets there first. He gets into that turn first and hugs the inside line. Ryan Douglas is going to try and go up the inside, but Lawson's got him covered as they go into that turn. Going around the outside right now is Jake Allen. He cuts back as he goes down that straight. But Richard Lawson, a great start, and he's just holding them all at bay up the inside. But Douglas is very fast behind him. Ryan Douglas will look for a mistake from Richard Lawson. Lawson looks behind him. He sees how close Douglas is as they go into this turn. He knows he can't make a mistake because if he makes a mistake, Ryan Douglas will be past. They're racing very close to each other. All four of these riders very close together as the last lap flag comes out. Ryan Douglas is fast. He's very fast in that second. He's gone off the inside line now. He's gone up the outside as he goes around here. He's going to have a go on this last turn, but I think Richard Lawson's got enough to keep him out there. Oh, it's close for that third place as well because Hans Anderson started to have a go at Ryan Douglas and Jake Allen had a look as well. Great racing from some great quality riders, but coming out on top once again, the brilliant riding there from Richard Lawson. A great start for him. And coming out on top once again were the Plymouth Gladiators with a 4-2 victory. So Heat 13 result then, a win for Richard Lawson in red. Three points to him, two points to Ryan Douglas in white. One point for Hans Anderson in blue. No score for Jake Allen in yellow. 52.19 was the winning time. A 4-2 to the Gladiators. 45-33 is now the score. And what a time to come out and win your first race. Richard Lawson, a great ride for him. And here we go then with race 14 and onto the circuit comes Ben Barker. He's gone straight onto that blue line. Perhaps that's what he was looking for. So heat 14 out of gate one will be in white Teruanio. In blue in gate two will be Dan Jilks. Gate three in yellow will be Zane Kennedy. And off the outside in gate four, rider replacement in red will be Ben Barker. We've got this heat 14 and then of course we've got heat 15. At the end of the evening, the nominated riders, of course. Into line then comes Tiruanio to complete the foursome here for race 14. So away we go, and Arnio has made a good start off the inside. Barker's had a big shunt going into that turn that sent him very wide. And Ben Barker's now found himself right at the back here. So, and now somebody's fallen at the back. I think that was Dan Jilks that went down. So we wait to see if he'll be able to get himself up. The red flags are out, the red lights are up, and the race has stopped. But that is a shame there for the rider in blue. Dan Jilks, I I'm not sure what happened. It was all very tight up there. Ben Barker got a shunt going into this first corner, which sent him very wide. He found himself at the back. So we've got in gate one, of course, Tero Arneo, who will have lots of space because there's nobody in gate two. Gate three is Zane Kennedy in yellow for the Scorpions. And on the outside for the Gladiators, Ben Barker. So away we go. And once again, Ben Barker has moved wider than he wants to go. He's gone right up into the dirt. And the two Scorpions are there. But Barker's gone round the outside of Zane Kennedy going into that turn. So he's picked one of them off. And now he's going to try and go round the outside. Kennedy's come back at him. He's trying to push him in up through the fence. But Zane Kennedy in that second, he's trying his best to keep Ben Barker behind him. But Barker is all over the circuit. Right on the outside as they come round here. He just ran out of room. He switched to the inside this time. And Ben Barker, despite trying everything he can, at the moment he can't find a way past Zane Kennedy in that second. He's very close to him going into that turn. There is one more lap of this to go. At the moment, the rider in white looks home and dry, Tero Arneo. But Ben Barker, he's going to have another go at Zane Kennedy on this last lap. He switches to the outside down that back straight. Into this turn they go, but it's looking like a 5-1. It is a 5-1. A good 5-1 for the Scorpions. Shame for Ben Barker who gave it everything he could. But a great ride from the Scorpions. Zane Kennedy and Tiruanio closing up the score a little bit more in this one. 
Heat 14 result then. Tiruani Owen White takes the win. Three points for him. Two points to Zane Kennedy in yellow. One point to Ben Barker in red. No points, of course. Nobody finished in fourth with the exclusion of Dan Jilks. 52.87 was the time. And a 5-1 to the Scorpions means it's 46-38 going into Heat 15. The Heat 15 runners and riders then. Gate 1 is Richard Lawson in red off the inside. Ryan Douglas will be in Gate 2 in white. Blue will be Hans Anderson in Gate 3 for the Gladiators. And off the outside, the Flying Finn, Tero Arneo in yellow for the Scorpions. So, four very capable riders, four riders who have been going well this evening. There is not a rider here who has had a bad evening. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, Douglas uh, off of gate two, really, is the danger man here, I think. So, here we go. And from the outside, Tero Arneo makes a great start from the outside. Straight across the front of the pack. And it is Arneo who leads down the back straight. Richard Lawson's right there up the inside. And in third at the moment is the rider, the teammate of Tero Arneo, of course, in that third place. But Tero Arneo, a great start, gets himself away. Ryan Douglas in that third place. He tried to find a way past to follow his teammate. He's now gone wide. Ryan Douglas has now allowed past him uh, the, uh, Hans Anderson. But Tero Arneo out in front, slowing things down. Is he doing that on purpose? Is he allowing Ryan Douglas to come back on terms with the rider in red? There's one more lap to go here. It's getting a little bit dusty here as Tero Arneo goes into this turn. He's on that blue line. On the inside, keeping things nice and tidy is, of course, number one. But it, as they come to the line, it's going to be a win there, Tero Arneo. A great ride by Lawson in that second place. He was right on that pole line. It was very difficult to see at the late stage of there. It got very, very dusty. Ryan Douglas, he was overtaken at one point, but he lost it back again. But a great ride there out in front from Tero Arneo in Heat 15 to make it a Scorpions advantage. Tero Arneo in yellow gets the three points. Two points to Richard Lawson in red. One point to Ryan Douglas in white. Hans Anderson in blue with no points in Heat 15. 52.06, it was a 4-2 to the Scorpions, but that gives us an overall result of 48-42 in favour of the West Carla Gladiators, which makes it back-to-back -back wins here for the Plymouth Gladiators at the Coliseum. Another good race evening, another good race evening for the Gladiators. So you can see the riders congratulating themselves here. And there is the confirmation of our final score here. The West Colour Gladiators, 48 points to 42 for the Scunthorpe Scorpions. A great night's racing once again from the Gladiators. Gary, six-point win. It was close again, wasn't it? Yeah, close again. You know, they hit us at the end, you know, with that 5-1 in E14. And then, and then we just didn't make the gate in the last race. But, you know, it was a good match. We got three points. Uh, they took a point off us, but... We just go up there on Friday and see if we can return the return the favour. You know I mean? Second win for the Gladiators here, and of course you're a second one for uh, yourself here as a team manager. Happy with how it went tonight? Yeah, it's good tonight. Yeah, every, everyone uh, went well, and everything. The track was good, and uh, you know, Scunthorpe had Ryan Douglas kept him in the meeting, and that, and then Terry Rhino had a good one. Do you know what I mean? So no, it was a really good meeting, uh, exciting to watch. But you know, they come back at the end, and you know, they took a point, so we got to go out there and do the same. Scunny on Friday, Pont off back in the squad after his um, nine days off, and a guest for Kenneth, I believe. Yeah, we got uh, Pont off back, yeah, because the concussion's over. Uh, Eddie, uh, we got Richard Lawson as a guest, so you know we're going up there, you know, put entertainment on with a good side. So hopefully, Scunford get a good crowd. And then back down here against Paul yet again, so we can't have, we can't have Richard again, unfortunately. But uh, another tough match against Paul on the next Tuesday. But the boys get boys, you up for it. Yeah, we're up for it, you know, poor good side, you know, but this time we're boo Richie instead of cheering him, you know what I mean? But he understands it, it'd be a good good meeting, uh, just got to sort out a good guess and try and get 46 points. I think as well, enjoy the, enjoy the victory there, Gary, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Well, that was a close run thing. Uh, the Scorpions got stung, just like the Lions were tamed last week. So tune in to Scorpions TV on Friday for the return match, the Gladiators against the Scorpions, and then back down here on Tuesday against the Pool Pirates in the league. I've been Dan Winchester, signing off for another week. My thanks to Gareth Bemstuff in the comms box. We'll see you next time on Gladiators TV. Take care. <laughs>